So we're going to test about first string. So the first thing we want to check, writing the code first, if first str is not equal to null and first str.length is greater than 3. If both of those are true, we will print just a simple message. The first string has more than three characters. And then we will put a comment block right above this to explain what's, what's going on. So here's how the Java compiler and the Java runtime deals with a Boolean expression like this with the AND operator. Um, because we have a potential issue here. So as we saw last week, if we call a method like length on a variable whose value is null, we get a null pointer exception. That's bad. We don't want that to happen. So we can only safely call the length method on first string if we're sure that first string actually refers to a real string object. That is, if its value is not equal to null. And the way that Java interprets this code is because of the AND operator, if the thing on the left is false, we know this whole expression is going to be false. So it doesn't even evaluate the thing on the right. This code won't even run if first string equals null, which is exactly what we want. We're actually using this feature to, an exam to our advantage. What this is, this is an example. So what this is called, it's got a name. This is an example of a short circuit. So the analogy is like in electronics when there's like a shorter path that skips part of the circuitry. Um, this is like that, but with, with code. Okay? And just to kind of explain what's going on here with the AND operator is for an AND operation, which is what we have here, if the left operand is false, in this case that would mean first str is actually equal to null. If the left operand is false, the right operand will not be evaluated because the AND operation is false regardless. So this is an efficiency thing. If the left operand is false and we have an AND operation, there's no point looking at the right operand. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. The whole AND operation is going to be false regardless. So for efficiency reasons and for allowing us to write code like this, Java won't even execute the thing on the right. This is not unique to Java. Python behaves the same way. You may or may not have run into that when you had programmed in Python. Um, C behaves the same way. In fact, I can't think of a programming language that doesn't behave. And so this is something that we can use to our advantage because if we, if we didn't have this short circuit feature, we would have to write this as like a nested in, right? We first have to check if first string is not equal to null, then we'd have to have another nested if to check the length. Let's look at another example. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated because short circuiting, we can use it to our advantage, but it can also, um, if we're not careful, it can lead to bugs. So we're going to prompt the user to enter their two favorite fruits. So let's do that. System.out.print. Enter your two favorite fruits. Um, and we're going to, we're, we're trying to make a connection with our user here. One of our favorite fruits is a kiwi. Um, so if either of their two favorite fruits are kiwis, we're going to be like, hey, we have the same favorite fruit. That's so cool. All right. So we're going to read in the first word. Um, if s.next.equals, so we have to use the equals method because we're comparing strings. So if the first word they type in is kiwi, or if the second word they type in is kiwi, either one. 
we'll print that, that nice message. We'll say, hey, we have this same similar fruits. System.out.println. Kiwi is one of my favorite fruits. Favorites too. Cool. But let's ask them another question as well. Okay, this is a little contrived, but I'm trying to show you the potential issue here. Let's also ask them their favorite ice cream flavor. System.out.print. Enter your favorite ice cream flavor. And we'll store that in a local variable of type string called flavor. So we'll call s.next again to read that in. And then we'll just print it. We'll like kind of echo it back. We'll say your favorite ice cream flavor is flavor. All right. So here's what I'd like you to do so you can get a sense of the potential issue here. Finish typing this, compile it, run it, and here's what I'd like you to type. I'd like you to say that your first favorite fruit is kiwi and your second favorite fruit is banana. And then whatever your favorite ice cream flavor is after that. But actually run through this and see what is displayed when you type in kiwi and then banana. All right, so I'm going to run the string example method as well. And it's going to prompt me to enter two words. This is the stuff we wrote last week. So I'm just going to write, I don't know, Halloween, H-A-L-L-O-W-E-N, and pumpkin. Those are good words. I misspelled pumpkin. Um, two favorite fruits. So my first favorite fruit is kiwi, and my second is banana. And when I enter this, let's look at how the program behaves. It says, hey, kiwi is one of my favorites, too. Oh, we expected that. And then it said, enter your favorite ice cream flavor, but it didn't wait. It didn't let me enter my favorite ice cream flavor. In fact, it just printed that my favorite ice cream flavor is banana. I don't know about you. If you like banana ice cream, I'm not judging. That's cool. I don't like banana ice cream. I like bananas. I eat them for breakfast every day, but not banana ice cream. Um, so this isn't right. Something's going wrong here. Uh, and so I, I contrived this particular example to point out what is happening and how short circuits can lead to bugs. So let's actually capture here in another note block what's going on. Um, because short circuit is something we can use to our advantage, but we also need to be aware of it so that it doesn't cause bugs like the one we just experienced. Um, so this is another short circuit example. And let me explain how that, how that is. Because short circuiting doesn't only apply to AND operations. For an OR operation, if the left operand is true, the right operand will not be evaluated. Because the OR operation is true regardless. So again, this is the efficiency in the Java compiler in runtime. In this case, if the first word the user typed in is in fact Kiwi, that means the left operand here is true. We're not going to even run this code because the OR expression is already true. It doesn't matter what, if the right is true or false. It's going to be true regardless. And so that's the potential bug because this may result in a bug. If the first word is Kiwi, we will never read the second word from the stream. So that word banana is just sitting there in the stream waiting for scanner to read it. So this, which may result in unexpected behavior. And in this case, the unexpected behavior is that word banana sitting in the stream? It's sitting there until we read it down here. Here's the next call that actually runs. So the reason why when it prompted us to enter our favorite ice cream flavor, it didn't wait for an answer because it thought we already answered. It called the next method on the scanner. The word banana was waiting to be read, and it read banana. 
and interpreted that as our favorite ice cream flavor. So the lesson here is that we need to just be careful when we use this short circuit example um, as we go.